we're talking about the PGA show and what went on there. I was very lucky. This year I did five presentations. That's the most I've ever done from an education perspective. And it's really interesting to see people in the show coming up and talking about the site and even teachers, you know, how much it's helped them teaching. They're finding that it works for most of their players. And a lot of them will say, well, it, for, for most all of my beginners and my average players, it works. I'm still doing some other things with my really good players, and which is fine, whatever. I mean, like I said, there's a lot of ways to swing. But I want to review the three, the five presentations, because there were basically three, and two of them were kind of spin-offs on the two, on the other three. The first one was, where does speed come from? Now, it's interesting, while I was down there, I also spent a day with Bob Toskey. Now, Bob's 93 now, still hits his driver 240 in the air. It's incredible. And we were talking, and he said, well, let's talk about speed, Mike. So here's what he did. He found a piece of cement. We were actually hitting balls, and it had about a 40-foot ceiling in this place. And so he stands there, and he holds the ball like this, and he drops it. Of course, the ball didn't bounce very high. So how high does that ball bounce? About to my waist? He goes, OK, now I'm going to add just a little bit of speed with my wrist. How high does it now bounce? And then he goes, OK, now watch this. And he bounced the ball, and it went way up into the ceiling, and it hit the rafters. And he goes, OK, how much core was involved in that one? So when he added all that speed, where did the speed come from? Drop the ball, no speed with the ball. Now that's the club face, really. This, there's a little speed, and then he gave it a little more speed. And all of a sudden, this made that ball go way up into the rafters. He said, let me see you take your core or lock your wrist in your arm and make your core make the ball bounce that far. So he's standing there going, he goes, oh yeah, that's really impressive. So where does speed come from? The first and most important place it comes from is here. So when I do clinics, I always people always think, well, it's how much your hips turn or how much your weight shifts. So, if I stand up and make a swing, just standing on just my left foot or my right foot, it wouldn't matter what foot I stood on. Okay, that ball's going to go 245 in the air. Plenty for most people to play. So there's not a lot of weight shift. And then I'll hit one from here. So from here, I'm going to have a hard time clearing my hips. Two forty-seven. So, <laughs> so what happened? Where's the hip turn and where's where's the weight shift? Well, maybe that's not that big a deal. And then I'll even do this, where I stand up and I say, "I'll tell you what. This time I'm going to hit this one, and as I hit the ball, I'm actually going to make my hips go the other way." Two sixty. So, where's all this? twist. Why? Now that's a way to do it, again. But speed comes from your hands, wrists, and arms. This is where most of your speed comes from. Now if your body works correctly, it can help to generate a little bit more speed. But if this doesn't know what it's doing, and you don't learn to create speed from here, and then you start trying to use your body as your main speed producer, see that assumes that this works. So if I use my body correctly, yeah, I can create a little more speed. But in all of those shots, my body did what they don't want it to do in golf. Well, I still hit it plenty far. Why? Because I can still move my arms independent of my shoulders, and my wrists still hinge, unhinge, and rehinge, which is my major speed producer. It's this right here. It's this ability to do that. How much tension is in my hand, wrist, arm, and shoulder? Virtually none. So if I stood up here with a driver with just my right arm and I went ahead and I did what I do, I hit it low, I didn't catch it solid, but that's a lot of speed. So what you have to learn first from speed is how to use this lever system, how to hinge, unhinge, and rehinge your wrists. There's your major speed producer in the golf swing. Is my body involved? You bet it is. Does it move? Sure it does. But if this doesn't work correctly, and you don't have that lever system, and you start trying to make that, make, if you think that's where speed comes from, you start using your body more and more, hands and arms less and less. 
Can you overuse your hands and arms? Not sure you can. Now you can get to where all you do is use your hands and arms. Okay, that's not what I want, but you could actually play from here. I can play from here. I can't play from here. Can't. Can't hit it far enough. So if I was going to make a mistake, I'd rather have my hands and arms doing too much than them not doing anything and my body trying to make the ball go. So that was the basis of presentation number one. Speed, where does speed come from? It comes mainly from this lever system and understanding what that is and how relaxed your arms have to be to react to and be able to give you speed when your body moves correctly. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for regular updates and tips. Thanks for watching.